Now let's move on to the device features for our specific PIC. So the PIC we're using is PIC 18 F67J50, as you can see to your right. So out of all the PIC 18 family, uh, this PIC chip actually has the highest uh, memory and has the highest amount of instructions. Now, a few device features that's worth noting is the available ports, uh, how many timers there are, how many modules there are, and the ADC module, or the 10-bit analog to digital module. Now here's just a block diagram of what's happening within the chip. Now this, again, is for you to have a look at in your own time. Uh, it gives a mechanical interface of what each set of these uh, pins connect to within the chip itself. And in most cases, it will help you in understanding how data is being transferred from one port to the next or one device to the next. So the program memory is this memory of what your code uh, or your program can do. So that's why it determines the maximum size of the application code. So this is the non-volatile code or the ROM of your microcontroller. Now, as you call each subroutine or you call each instruction, it pushes it to a stack. Now this stack actually determines what instructions need to occur. And then what we have here is also what we call a program counter, uh, which actually points to the specific instructions that your stacks call. And the program counter actually determines the order of operations when it comes to which uh, instruction happens first and which instruction happens later and when you're manipulating the code around in assembly specifically you are actually changing the order of your program counter so it looks at different instructions at a different priority now microcontrollers have these special addresses which are hardwired into its microchip so microcontrollers don't have a bias so every time they start up, the reset vector is called, and this just resets the state of the microcontroller. Now, there are also another type of special address called interrupt vector addresses, and they implement subroutines. So subroutines are these calls that happen when you want to interrupt from normal pro from your normal program. And remember the program counters from the previous slide, they dictate uh, the pointers which point to which specific instruction sets. So interrupts actually change the program counters to prioritize different instructions uh, at a different priority based on what event occurs. When your program executes, it uses data memory. So when you declare a variable, that variable is allocated to memory in your general purpose registers. Now in microcontrollers, when we address a specific memory register, we can use 8 bits. However, in our PIC18, we have too much memory for 8 bits to refer to which specific general purpose register. That's why they introduced this idea of a bank, where each bank will consist of 8 bits worth of memory, or 256, and we have 16 banks. Now, special function registers try to avoid this uh, bank select by what they call an access bank or an access RAM. So when you need to address a special function register, you just call the last eight bits or the least significant bits. And then the foremost significant bits are located in this access RAM. And basically it just allows you a way to access the special function registers without selecting a specific bank. As you can see in this image, we have 16 banks within our PIC. The opcode is this instruction that we send when we tell our program to execute, and that uh, addresses 12 bits altogether. That's why we have this concept of selecting banks. So when you select bank, it actually selects the four most significant bits and your opcode determines the other eight. 
This slide just shows you the special function registers that the PIC-18 has. Now you will become intimately familiar with many of these as you start programming the PIC and learning about it. Now, it is easier to read this if you look in the data sheet at page 81. However, there are a few that I highly recommend you do a, a more in-depth look into, specifically in the data sheet, and these are highlighted here. So specifically the ports, the capture compare password module, the ADC modules, the timer modules, uh, your interrupt configuration modules, and your status module. Special function registers are often hardwired into logic circuits. That's why they can form this access RAM due to the hardwiring of it into the chip itself. Now they allow control of the operation of the device and for example that means changing the direction of the input output ports or using the analog to digital converter or interfacing with the timers within your microcontroller. Contrasting this, you have your general purpose registers, and as mentioned before, that's generally used by your program. So when you declare a variable, it allocates a memory within a general purpose register to store that information. So if you allocate that variable as five, then that specific general purpose register becomes five. The status register is a special register in the microcontroller. It is actually hardwired into the arithmetic operations of the microcontroller. So they can be the destination for any instruction. So anything related to arithmetic operations, it will affect the zero, the digit carry or the carry bits. And that way, writing into those bits is disabled. And based on the device logic, they are set or cleared. So there are specific bits as well in the status register which are not writable. Therefore, if you write a specific instruction to change those bits, the destination might be different than what you intend it to be. Let's look at an example of a binary operation. So 0100 minus 1001. So in this case, if you perform this arithmetic operation in the microcontroller, the carry bit in the status register will be set because the most significant bit requires a carry. So 0 minus 1 requires a carry from somewhere else. And another example, you have 0, 0100 0, 0 minus 0, 0100. 0. In this case, the 0 bit in the status register will be set. As mentioned in the previous slide, uh, this is the status register from the data sheet. And you can see that if you clear the status register, it will set the zero bit, but will leave the others unchanged. And once again, that's mentioned in the previous slide, where because everything is linked into the arithmetic computations of the microcontroller, you, if you set a specific bit in the status register, it will not necessarily uh, output what you've expected. So in the third point, if you set the carry bit as one, the status register C bit will actually not be set. The simplest peripherals for your microcontroller is your GPIO or general purpose input output pins. Now there are a bunch of special function registers which allow you to control the input output pins. So for example, you have TRIS or TriState, which actually controls the direction of data flow for each IO pin. You also have port and lap or latch. So writing to the port will write to the output of the port. And then if you read from the latch, you read what is currently in port. So do remember that reading from directly from the port special function registers will not work as expected. Now let's look at an example of initializing port D. So port D is an 8-bit port, so each pin is individually configurable as an input or output. So in our example, uh, we initialize port D by clearing the output data latches. So port D is equals to OX00. And then we want to change the directions of the pin. So we use tri-state or TRIS, and then the corresponding port, so TRIS D. Uh, 
uh, is equals to 0x cf or trisd as 0b and then 11001111. So we're treating port, uh, port D pins 4 and 5 as outputs and the other pins as inputs. And an easy hint is that 1 is input and 0 is output. Now notice that we had two different notations for trisd, ox and ob. Now in MPLAB, ox denotes a hex representation and ob denotes a binary representation. This is the instruction sets for the PIC microcontroller. Now this is the lowest level of programming that you can do as each instruction that you can see in here, in each row, directly affects the hardware of the microcontroller. Now this language is called assembly language or assembler language depending on which device you're using and they're generally uh, quite useful in allowing you to program what you want to achieve so they can be moving specific registers to somewhere else you can implement specific functions using these low level operations and in high level programming languages such as C they're basically libraries written uh, to perform these low level computations so when you say 1 plus 1 the C library actually converts 1 plus 1 into declaring a register which has value of 1 declaring a second register of 1 and doing an arithmetic addition of the two registers to receive your result. Now I'll let you look at these instruction sets in your own time and do remember that these are the low level programming instructions and will not be needed because we are using a high level programming uh, language uh, C to program our PIC microcontrollers.